Cursed Pirate Girl is a comic book slash graphic novel that has been coming out for quite some time now. But this is not the kind of comic where you can expect weekly releases. Nay, sir! And instead, the author and illustrator is devoted to just presenting this story in these absolutely drop-dead, gorgeous depictions of Cursed Pirate Girl's Adventure. Now, this is a written and illustrated by situation, and that's going to actually be the focus of a lot of the praises and criticisms of this review, because as many people who are fans of media know, having someone who is written, directed by, written, illustrated by, written, starring, direct, it's a kind of like, it could be a dangerous territory. You can see masterpieces are complete egomaniacal, artistically drained flops. Thankfully, it's not one of those. And instead, it does fall into that territory of feeling extraordinarily reflective of one mind's devotion to telling a story, for better and worse. But of course, first, let's talk about just the beginnings of the story to see if this would be something that interests you. Cursed Pirate Girl is out on an adventure to try and discover the origins of her Self, because she believes that her father is a great pirate lord and she wants to find him. So she sets out from the small beach from which she has been resting and training and preparing from to go and find him. And from there, a very Alice in Wonderland-like world begins to be revealed to us, except with a severe pirate overlay. And Cursed Pirate Girl from there leans heavy into absurdism and just trippy psychedelic delic vibes. It's funny, I usually think of like grim and edgy and absurdist and kind of fun on very opposite ends of a spectrum, but Cursed Pirate Girl seems to be bending these things together largely in its presentation. And that is violently realized by this art style where the artist himself has said he will take, well, listen to him. I try to pack in as much information into every panel as I possibly can. When you're reading it, like what you see is how big it's drawn. Let me get you a good page here. So give you an idea um, of the detail that I like to put in things, because I'm a little obsessive when it comes to detail, but I really want to sort of fill it, you know, fill every corner. When it, when it comes to the book, it's about a week a page. And that dedication has resulted in a comic that I at many points just audibly out loud said something along the lines of, no. in terms of just being blown away by what was being accomplished within the panel and breaking the rules of the panel and doing these full page spreads and starting from an extremely high point, the author then improves in volume after volume to the point where the most recent release, as far as I've actually been able to find correction here if I'm wrong, it's actually a noticeable improvement which blows my mind because what we were already starting with was a masterwork. It's playful yet deadly. It's grotesque, yet you want to get pulled away into this funky, wild, gothic, in a way, pirate-themed, just horrendous landscape. But with all those praises for the art, the criticisms begin to come in quite heavily with the narrative. Because in that vein of it really does feel like it comes from one mind, it's one mind to a fault, whereas it felt like no one told the author, hey, yes, you have some inklings of a story here, some kind of fun world building, but the narrative thrust and especially the structure is borderline non-existent. This really just feels like you're following a child wandering around and finding excuses to display this absolutely exquisite artwork. This became even apparent with the introduction of the titular pirate girl character, where there were tropes and bits around the introduction and development of her that I was immediately thinking, I bet these are cliches and tropes the author really likes, and a whole lot of the story just continues that way. It feels like this is the author just hitting beats they really enjoy without necessarily justifying a whole lot of the in-between. There is some pretty good character work with Cursed Pirate Girl and some of the cast and crew around her, but in no way is Cursed Pirate Girl utilizing a lot of the advantages you can get with being this absurdist, this stylized, 
to then turn around and build character in a way like you see often accomplished in things like Discworld, which will lean into absurdism to help build character and motivate story. There's this incredible box of tools that this book has opened by delving so deeply into this genre, but it's not utilizing to their full extent. So what balances out here is I will of course keep reading Cursed Pirate Girl because one, I like pirates, who doesn't? The art is something that my eyes just feast on, but the narrative is the point where if he just came out and was like, ah, I'm actually gonna change it entirely from here, I'm going a different direction, and is everyone okay with that? It's gonna allow me to do more stuff artistically that's gonna be wild and wacky. I would just be like, yeah, cool. Do that, because I'm just here for the art. There were times where I was spending so much time just scrutinizing the smallest details of these full-page spreads, and it began to feel like I was examining some mad serial killer's writings, but instead it's this mad artist's drawings where there's that feverish just devotion to every small little nook and cranny. It was powerful, it was fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, but as of right now, I am viewing Cursed Pirate Girl as a delightful treat, but not necessarily something I am reading for like emotional investment and value of anything beyond just the art makes me go, wow. Seriously though, when you get to like these full page spreads and everything, Oh my god. I've never seen anything like it. Well, let me know what you think of Cursed Pirate Girl in the comments down below. You can, of course, purchase it down there if you'd like. And I also just released a long movie deep dive with my good buddy Noah over on our second channel, where we're doing a 100 movie challenge going through the AFI's top 100 films of all times. So if you'd like to check that out, our most recent is Singing in the Rain, and up next we'll be doing Raging Bull. Link to the second channel in the description down below. Thank you so much for tuning in. Like and subscribe if you're not already. Bye!